What's up, everyone? Uh, I've been paying attention to this fiasco about um, the hell's this coffee company called? Black Rifle Coffee with the New York Times um, expose or whatever. It was actually pretty goddamn long. It's like, why does the New York Times care so much? But people are saying it's negative. Anyway, I was going to show this display. I saw this video. Um, it's from my friend in the St. Louis area. And like, I don't know. They kind of have some alright looking shirts. Wait, it says... It's just basically a big advertisement, though. And they're kind of cool looking shirts, but... They have these type of shirts everywhere. Even at gas stations, you know, like military, patriotic, drab looking shirts. Which I kind of like, but... They're $25, which... Um, I don't know if I would say it's overpriced. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive. It's an interesting strategy from a branding point of view because people are buying their shirts and wearing them. So even if the company made no money from these shirts whatsoever, yeah, here's a coffee. It's just like, whatever. Go get a fucking coffee. Um... It's free advertising, you know what I mean? So, but you know how difficult it is to get people to wear your brand, especially it's not a shirt brand, right? It's a coffee company that makes shirts. So like, I don't see people buying Starbucks shirts and wearing them around. So the fact that people are buying the brand of something that's not a clothing company, like I can't even think of even many other examples that do this. Yeah, I see Under Armour, I see Nike. Those are clothing companies. But people wearing, like, the brand of a company that isn't clothing, I can't even think of any company that does that, or any any people. There's definitely examples. It's like um, people buy Metallica shirts. They buy The Grateful Dead. You know, you might see, like, some of those. I don't see much Black Rifle coffee, but I think every now and again. So, um, Black Rifle coffee, for lack of a better comparison, is basically trying to be the Starbucks of the right. Uh, that's what the article was about. Um, and I'm thinking, like, why do people care so much about what their coffee company thinks? Coffee in bulk form like this is basically a commodity. Okay, it's brewed, so there's like a little bit of production. So it's beyond just a basic commodity. But it's like buying, you know, cooked bacon or something. Or chicken parts. You know what I mean? Do you, do you give a shit, like, what the politics are of uh, Purdue chicken? Like, oh shit, the owner said something that's kind of a little bit disrespectful of the second amendment like yeah i'm not buying purdue chicken i'm gonna like i'm gonna research chicken producers and find out what the owners say and yeah if they don't support my politics yeah i'm not buying your shit like how did we get to this point i don't really know the actual history but i'm thinking that uh i don't know sjw types social justice warriors they're really put their politics front and center for everything they do, gravitated to start a company like Starbucks. Because, you know, Starbucks customers spend a lot of time there. So even though it is just a coffee company, it becomes a pretty big part of people's daily lives. And so I don't really know the history of Starbucks, but I'm guessing the customer base influenced the politics or at least the positions they take publicly um, in this direction. And so that creates a fertile ground for people that don't like these politics, a right wing type company or conservative type type company to take opposite positions, which um, Black Rifle Coffee has really taken advantage of this niche and 
Um, they get a long way to go to get anywhere near Starbucks, but I think they have an opportunity to do that. So in this article, you know, they're dismissing and talking shit about some of their more extreme users that, you know, you basically have these toxic individuals on the far right wing that do their own brand of virtue signaling. Maybe they don't realize this, but, uh, you know, if you're not adamantly again, if you're not adamantly for stop the steal or like defending the capital raiders or if you're not adamantly against wearing masks, you know, you're a cuck and like you need to be tarred and feathered and shamed. This is what the left, this is a, in my mind, this is copying what left wingers do. So like you're playing the game of the social justice warriors. You know, I'm drinking coffee right now and I got it from Costco. Like those shitty K-cups that you can buy in bulk and they're cheap. You know, did I look up what Costco has been saying about politics and where they've been donating and blah, blah, blah? No. And, and why would you do that for a coffee company but not other companies? It's because this paradigm has been set up and people just mindlessly follow it without even thinking why. It's kind of what our country has become. Like, we become a country of pundits and a bunch of drones that follow what these pundits say and get outraged and feel like, you know, they need to vent their outrage. But you're never going to win trying to, trying to like, appeal to um, Rittenhouse defenders or, um, you know, George Zimmerman. Like, did any companies defend George Zimmerman and hire George Zimmerman as a spokesman? I can't think of a single one. So, like, is every company a cuck? Because, like, they didn't stand and fight in, on the front lines of George Zimmerman. Like, no. I watched the trial. By the letter of the law, George Zimmerman uh, was not guilty. Not innocent. That judgment doesn't exist. Not a Boy Scout. Not a great person. He was not guilty. But... I think a lot of people wouldn't necessarily support exactly what he did or like who he is or all of his antics afterwards. You know what I mean? So I don't think there's a way for the right wing. Like I think by playing the game that the, that these social justice warriors play, you're, they lose, you lose if you try to play that game because then you're just politicizing everything. And isn't that the problem? You know what I mean? Like, just imagine how ridiculous it would be if you if you did what these people that are trying to do with Black Rifle Coffee, if if you did that with every company that you buy from, like the company that you rent from, your mortgage company, your bank, where you spend a lot more money than fucking coffee, your car company, like you can't even find companies that support your politics, but somehow when it comes to coffee. It's like, you know, choosing a church. They have to be a paragon of virtue. I don't know. It's also dumb. Like, you know, I know I know Starbucks is shitty and they suck. You know what? It's a pretty nice place to stop. And uh, the coffee is good. And, you know, you can make fun of the blue-haired people sitting at their Apple laptop posting about, like, you know, fighting the patriarchy. For bringing down capitalism, you know, from their $3,000 iBook or whatever the fuck Apple sells. You know what I mean? And if there was a Black Rifle Coffee, I think they only have a handful of locations in the country right now. But I guess they're trying to expand. I would go there and check it out. Because they're at least better than Starbucks and what they stand for in my mind. But like I was saying, yeah, you have these... Uh, the social justice warriors of the right wing that try to be like the arbiters of who's a cuck and who's real and try to impose their will. And a company like Black, Black Rifle Coffee, um, you're never going to win appealing to those people. 
you know, the crazies, like I mentioned before. Yeah, you, you might win their support, but you're going to... For every one of those crazies, there's, you know, 10 or 50 or 100 normies. And the market is huge, so even if they only... For retail locations, even if they only took away, like, I don't know, 5% of Starbucks foot traffic, or even 1% to 3%, that would be absolutely enormous for them. Um, and you're not going to do that appealing to, like, Rittenhouse and the worst, most toxic elements of the far right. They just got a big expose in a national newspaper that would only help them in my mind. And yeah, the crazies might have canceled their subscription. But they're basically saying in that article, like, yeah, if the racists, the um, whatever, deplorables, <laughs> you know, they can go get fucked. We don't care. He actually said he would pay them to not buy his product. I mean, I think it's a bold move. Because all this company really cares about is appealing to, you know, regular average Americans that, you know, like their country, aren't extremists, but specifically people in public service like firemen, law enforcement, gun owners. Um, so since we have shitty Starbucks, I guess it's a good option to have Black Rifle Coffee. But again, I don't too much. I don't put too much stock in the politics of the companies I buy from. You know, if they were if they were like imprisoning children, okay, I might be turned off by a company. But in that case, I would just appeal to whatever country that's happening to put a stop to that. Like you don't even realize how horrible some of the companies are that we do business from. Just think of all the Middle Eastern countries we buy oil from or African countries we buy commodities from and what that shit's going to fund. And these cringy right wingers are, are um, you know, boycotting companies because they don't explicitly support a mass shooter. But granted, okay, you. I think by the letter of the law, it looks like Rittenhouse might be not guilty, definitely. But still, like, why would you embrace someone who's involved in a mass shooting? That's just stupid business. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's still a, a a tragedy, and why why would you want a brand associated with that? You know, it's like look what Michael Jordan did. He he never got involved in politics because Republicans buy sneakers too, and like I think he's better for it. Or you could be like LeBron, who uh, takes the side of China over the United States. And post stupid shit and piss off at least half the people or whatever, even 30% of the people. Just stupid. So, I don't know. Those are kind of my thoughts. It's just a bunch of idiots. Um, you can tell you live in a first world country where people are outraged about like what the owner of their coffee company thinks and says and... Oh, I'm canceling and boycotting. Yeah, definitely first world problems, but like rich people in the first world problems. Anyway, everyone have a good day.